to a very beautiful woman with a very cold heart. Excuse me? What well, you just tossed a wheelchair-bound cripple out of a house she's lived in for over 20 years without batting even one of those amazingly long eyelashes of yours. So what if I did? Your mother has had more than her share of time being mistress of the Crane Empire, and now it's my turn. I gotta tell you, Teresa, until tonight I never met anyone quite as ruthless as my mother. Well, you and that contest hands down. How dare you judge me? And if anyone understands how much your mother deserves her comeuppance, it's you. It's true. She never really was very maternal towards me. I was always an afterthought, an irritating but necessary second son. In fact, I bet if it were up to her, she probably never would have even had me. But Julian must have prevailed. You know, the whole safety net of the air and the spare. Yeah, but it, it turns out that Ethan wasn't a real crane. And since he's not Julian's son, you're really the firstborn male heir after all. Tell that to Mumsy, okay? For, for reasons we don't need to get into right now, she still loves her number one much more than me. Still, the Barracuda is in a wheelchair, and there is a bloody nasty storm raging outside. I mean, even my amoral father and his tardy little mistress were shocked when you showed her the door tonight. Well, I don't give a damn what Julian and Rebecca think of me. Perhaps. But I was under the impression that you did give a damn what Ethan thought of you. And if Julian and Rebecca think you went too far tonight, how do you think Ethan feels about you at the present moment? I don't know how Ethan feels about me at the moment. But even if I shocked him a little bit, he will get over it. You think so, do you? Of course he will. Because Ethan is the first person to stand up for his convictions. And that's all I was doing tonight with Ivy, was, was defending my honor. And the honor of my family. I mean, you heard the nasty things your mother was slinging around about me and my child. Oh, and to think that Pilar and her people prefer sangria over champagne. It's no surprise to me. I'm sure it's just too much work for them to unpop the cork. Yeah, they probably just like to screw off the cap and guzzle it straight from the bottle. <laughs> oh, and then there's Teresa, the Taco Bella of Harmony, pretending to be some grand lady. What a joke! Damn that Teresa. She does not belong in a fine house like this. You know, I agree. <laughs> I think Teresa and her little mongrel spawn should go back to the barrio where their kind live. <laughs> How dare I be disparaged little Ethan like that? But you know, there are so many of them here. You know, it really makes you wonder what the Border Patrol does all day. <laughs> Still, Pilar and I used to be really, really close. Well, that was until her children all started moving on up. I mean, first there was Teresa and then Antonia. What's next? I mean, is her sister Maria going to start getting it on with Alistair? <laughs> There's no way I went too far tonight. My mother's disabled, Teresa. Disabled my foot? I mean, a snake isn't handicapped if it still has its fangs. Your mother is just as poisonous now as she's ever been. And what happened to her tonight was well deserved. I would have thought you'd applaud me for tossing Ivy out of the mansion. Since when do you care what happens to her? I don't know. I don't even know why I'd give a damn. After everything you told me about the kind of mother Ivy never was to you, I think you'd hate her guts. Hate her? No, I don't hate her. I just never loved her. I think you have to be loved as a child to learn how to give any back. You would think that all mothers come with a built-in maternal instinct. Well, Ivy must have been absent the day they handed those out. God only knows why I felt so protective over her when I saw you were serious about giving her the boot. I mean, if the situation were reversed, that lady'd give me a kick on the way out. See, now, if, 
If Ethan's situation were compromised in any way, well, now we've got a whole different story. See, that lady would stand in front of a moving train for my half-brother. That's sad. Don't even think about feeling sorry for me, Teresa, okay? It's not my bag, never has been, never will be. No, I, I was just... Saying... Actually, you know what? I owe the lady a debt of gratitude. I mean, if she had coddled me the way she did Ethan, I wouldn't have been forced to grow up so fast. She actually did me and my siblings a huge favor by always fussing over numero uno. He gave us an early taste of the real facts of life. You know what, though? I'll never forget when we were growing up, if, if Mother was all dressed up to go to one of her big parties, you know, and all I wanted to do was come in and give her a hug good night. Well, she pushed me away because she was afraid I might mess up her dress. But she'd let Ethan come in, you know, with chocolate sauce all over his face and hands. She'd pick him up and spin him around like he was her darling little prince. Like he could do no wrong. It's not like Ethan turned out to be some spoiled brat who thinks he deserves things without earning them. You're a little prejudiced when it comes to him, don't you think? Oh, Fox, I was just... I, I don't want to argue about it. You know, I mean, I'm not the kind of guy who blames all of his problems on his early childhood. Besides, it makes perfect sense that my mother favored Ethan over the rest of us. I mean, he was her child by the man she loves, and we were her children by the loathsome Julian. I don't love my son any less because he was fathered by Julian. Well, you're not my mother, Teresa. It is strange, though. I mean, I was raised by a woman who wouldn't let me kiss her goodnight because she was afraid I might smudge her lipstick, and... And here I am feeling bad that she got thrown out of her house. What do you suppose is up with that? If Ivy were my mother and neglected me as badly as she did you growing up, I'd be cheering as she rolled out the door. <laughs> but Ivy isn't your mother, she's mine. Your mother may not have had enough beans to fill a pot, but she lavished love and caring on all of her kids. I bet you didn't know how lucky you had it back then. No. What I do now. Anyway, if you are still feeling bad for your mother, you can console yourself with the fact that I probably did Ivy a huge favor by tossing her out of the mansion. How's that? Well, Ivy and I have been living under the same roof long enough for me to know what she wants in life. Even I know that one. Sam Bennett. You know, even Prince Ethan moves down to second place when Sam's in the room. Exactly. There's nothing that Ivy wants more than to take Sam away from his wife and marry him herself. And you know how your mother is when she wants something. Mm. Poor Grace Bennett. If Ivy gave me a rough time, I hate to think of the hell she's going to raise in the Bennett household. Mm -hmm.